We're here today to pay tribute to the sacrifice, the selfless commitment, the courage and the heroism of the 130,000 or so Sikhs who fought alongside their British comrades in World War I. It's worth reflecting that Sikhs at that time only made up 2% of the Indian population, but 22% of the army itself. They served on four continents in every theatre of war. France, Flanders, Mesopotamia, Egypt, Palestine, in Gallipoli, in East Africa, in Persia, and on the Northwest frontier, and in Burma. In both wars, there were 83,000 Sikh soldiers killed and 109,000 wounded in action. Some examples, at Neuve Chapelle in 1915, the Sikh regiment lost 80% of its manpower. At Gallipoli, the 14th Sikhs lost 371 officers and men in a matter of minutes. These statistics are staggering and they're humbling. So we should pause to reflect on the terrible sacrifice made by men from the subcontinent fighting far from home for a distant country and for a distant cause. But we should reflect, too, on their courage. And being Sikh warriors, it's their glory, it's their courage and their loyalty that they would, on, would, on, would want honoured, their achievements and not merely their sacrifice. And that's something that is difficult sometimes for the modern generation to understand. So I'll take the words which really encapsulate the spirit of the Khalsa by Dufadar Nathan Singh, from the Second Lancers writing in 1915 to a fellow Sikh soldier back in India. I think it captures that spirit. The Sikh roars like a lion on the field of battle and yields up his life as a sacrifice. Whoever is fortunate enough to be born a Rajput never fears the foe in battle. He gives up all thought of worldly pleasure and dreams only of the battlefield. He who dies on the field of battle, his name never dies but lives in history. He who fronts the foe boldly in battle has God for his protection. Once a Sikh takes the sword in hand, he has only one aim, victory. Their courage is the spirit of legend, stuff of legend. Think of the platoon of Dogra Sikhs at Ypres in 1914 who fought to the last man and the last man, rather than dishonor himself with surrender, took his own life with his last bullet. Think of Sapa Dalip Singh, who stood over his fallen officer, Lieutenant Rail Kerr, fought off countless Germans, and then carried him to safety. Think of Lieutenant Smith and his ten Sikh bombers at Festubert, crawling through a torrent of lead to accomplish their mission. That party gained the Victoria Cross, the Indian Order of Merit, the equivalent of the Victoria Cross, and a Distinguished Service Medal for every soldier. There are countless stories of the courage of the black lions, as the Arabs of Mesopotamia called them. All are true to the spirit of the 21 Khalsa warriors who held off thousands of Afghans at the fort at Saragari. This record of courage and of fighting ability is unique. We first met at war, but a unique respect for each other's courage, skill, and determination gave birth to a long and proud shared military heritage. That heritage of Sikh service to the crown is humbling, courageous, and inspiring. It goes on today, and I'm proud to serve alongside British and Indian Sikhs in the British Army today. This Sikh martial prowess is needed by the country as much today as ever. The world's a dangerous place, I don't need to tell you, you only have to look at the news and to read the newspapers. We face some truly implacable enemies and our security can never be guaranteed. To face these challenges, we need the country's best talent. But we also need to represent all communities and all faiths in the UK. So as a personal plea, I ask you to encourage young Sikh men and women, just as their forebears did, to volunteer to serve and to defend the country of their birth in the regulars, 
or in the reserves, just as Jay does, as officers or in the ranks, but especially as officers. We need their talent, we need your traditions, which I believe are consistent with those of the British Army. In turn, we'll make you proud of them and give them skills for life. So thank you for honouring the memory of our Sikh brothers in arms with this memorial. And I think there's no more fitting way to close this address than the words of General Sir Frank Masservi, which are written on the Sikh memorial at Ypres. Finally, we that live on can never forget those comrades who in giving their lives gave so much that is good to the story of the Sikh regiment. No living glory can transcend that of their supreme sacrifice. May they rest in peace. In the last two world wars, 83,000 turban-wearing Sikh soldiers were killed and 109,045 were wounded. They all died or were wounded fighting for the freedom of Britain and the world and during shell fire with no other protection but the turban, the symbol of their faith. Bolesonihal. <laughs>